Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to get diff to commits, tags, or branches. This could be useful to see what changed between two different releases, a couple of tags, or somewhere in between. So we're going to go over how to do this on the command line using the Git tool, as well as go over GitHub's UI, although there are options available on GitLab and Bitbucket as well. So the use case here is, you know, maybe you have some issue in production and you're not really sure when a bug was introduced. Maybe you need to go back eight different commits and maybe diff that versus the current commit, or maybe you're using Git tags. So you just want to diff both releases and kind of figure out what the root cause is, you know, based on some code that changed. So yeah, let's get into it here and just start by doing a git log just to see a list of all the different commits here we have in this project. And let's just say for this case here, we want to compare or do a diff between this commit here and the latest commit that we have here, which is pointing to head. So we're going to see all the code changes between then and then. So two points in time, basically. So yeah, we can do a git diff here, paste in the ID there here, and then use head for the other one, you know, just as a shortcut. So we don't have to copy paste two different IDs here. But in this case, we can see a diff of the changes between the two. So we can see a couple back end and uh, dependencies were changed, front end dependencies, and then a couple of different, uh, you know, dependency files and lock files, etc. Not important, right? For the sake of this video, the contents of these diffs. But yeah, that's just a way to diff two different commits here, but you can do this on tags as well. So if I do a git tag here, uh, we can see a list of all the different tags that we have. You know, we can be like, well, okay, what changed between version, I don't know, 0 0.70 as well as 0 0.90, right, the bottom one there. So we can just do the same type of command here. We can do, um, you know, a git diff on two different tags here. So let's go with 9.0. And now we can see like, okay, cool. So we removed the webpack apparently in this one, and there's going to be all sorts of different changes here as I page through it. It's not important to see exactly what changed here, but we can also see like, oh, okay, it looks like a version of Node was bumped from 14. Uh, dot 17 to 16 dot 14, etc. And here you can go through all the different changes and see exactly what changed. And of course, you can do this on uh, branches too. So if I do a git branch here, I don't even know what branches I have. Uh, these are old branches I can probably delete. But yeah, let's say that, uh, I don't know, I have this one uh, branch called nested blueprints, and we also have the main one. So we can just do a git diff on uh, this one to main, let's say, and then we can be like, okay, cool. Like, you know, all of this change log stuff was added here. You know, that other branch is kind of old here. We can see, you know, again, node got updated, Python got updated, all sorts of other stuff as well. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. And you can also combine both diffing commits and tags. So for example, if we go back to this commit ID here, I can grab that one and we can do a git um, diff on, I don't know, that ID there as well well as 0 0.90 for the git tag here. And then we can see all sorts of different stuff here, right? And the reason that works is, you know, git has different, uh, I don't even know how you want to describe these, like references, like a reference type. So it could be like a commit, or it can be a tag, or it can be a branch. You know, these are all uh, references, I guess, if, if that's the definition for that one. But yeah, that's basically how to do it on the command line to see how things are. And, uh, you know, I do do this uh, for GitHub as well. I guess we'll get this in a second here too. Let me just jump to the changelog file just to prepare for that one. But yeah, if we go back to here, you know, you can do some comparisons on GitHub very easily here. This is unrelated to the changelog here, but in this case, I actually used head tilde three to compare that to head. You know, we can see these over here. And if I actually go to this repo here, I don't know why I opened that so early here, but yeah, if I do a git diff here on head tilde three to head itself, that's basically going back three commits and diffing it versus uh, the current commit here. So, you know, head tilde and then a number is a short shortcut to go back X number of commits there, just so you don't need to put in the ID here. But you can see this is the exactly uh, the same diff as we looked at before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if not, it was a one-off uh, issue on my end here. Um, but yeah, you can see we are diffing, you know, multiple commits back. So if we do a get log here, you know, head three is going to be uh, one, two, and three here. So there we go with that 70E one. Um, but yeah, okay, because, you know, head with no number is this one here. So this is head one, this is head two, this is head three, four, etc. Cool. So let's go back to GitHub's UI here. And we can see we're doing that comparison here. And we can see all sorts of different things that changed. You know, there's a diff there. A little bit easier or maybe nicer to read on uh, GitHub, depending on what your setup is like or what you want to do here. I kind of do like the side by side. But we could do that on the command line too, uh, using other tools. But yeah, in any case, you know, that is how you can compare things here. So in this case, you know, you can put in a tag, you can put in uh, other stuff as well. So yeah, you can use their UI to poke around here. And in this case here, I know it's probably going to be a little small in video, but you just go to the repo name slash compare, and then uh, you'll have a, an empty setup here where you need to choose things that you actually want to compare here. But yeah, okay, cool. Let's go back to the command line here. Uh, I was going to show before that I do use this in my change logs. So 
if you go to the bottom of this change log here, or actually I should say, you know, I do have, uh, you know, these brackets here set up here for different releases and pay no attention. Like some of these releases are pretty old. I constantly do add uh, things to this like every week or two. I just don't make releases because it's kind of weird. You know, it's like a starter app where it's like, it's ever changing. You know, if I change a dependency version to something, I don't necessarily cut a release. So these are like arbitrary points in time. But where I'm going with this one is at the very bottom here, I do have things set up with uh, Markdown over here where we are just linking to comparing two different tags. So if you wanted to see exactly what changed between two different releases, you know, GitHub actually makes this pretty nice here with all the setup. If I go to the change log here, you know, you may want to be like, okay, what changed between what's on the current main branch right now and uh, the latest release over here. So if I click this unreleased here, because you know I technically didn't cut a number for this release yet, it is comparing head to that tag, just like we kind of did on the command line before, you know, comparing two different reference types. And here, here we can see exactly what changed. You know, all sorts of different uh, dependencies were updated for certain things. We can click into details here. You can be like, oh, cool, like you know, Flask Static, static Digest was updated. Here is that uh, specific commit here, right? So yeah, pretty useful just to see that. And by the way, this change log itself is a format called Keep a Change Log. I've done videos about that one in the past. I'll put a card up for that one. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Just a quick, you know, simple tip on. And how to get diff different reference types. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Also, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.